My name is John Farnworth. I'm a football freestyler and I hold currently five Guinness World Record titles. So the record I hold on the slack line is technically very hard. The challenge for that really is fusing two things together. I learned how to slack line without a ball and then, you know, adding a ball in just made it twice as hard. The most football touches on the toe in a minute is technically so hard because the toe it's right at the end of your foot. I would perform this trick a lot, but I would never do it for a minute. You know, I'd probably do it for five, 10 seconds in a performance. The record I hold for the most full volley rebounds in 30 seconds. I really enjoyed it. I did it in a live environment, actually. So there were a lot of people around watching me when I did it. I think it was at the National Football Museum. So I felt a little bit of pressure, to be honest. And there were other people attempting it at that point, but I was lucky enough to get the title. So the record for the highest altitude of a ball dropped and volleyed into a goal is very difficult very, very difficult. So the new record that I've got in my sights is to cross the Sahara Desert. I'm looking to cover 100 kilometers in the fastest time possible. The thing that appeals to me about this challenge is, well, firstly, it's very difficult. It's never been done before. And I really wanted to set a challenge that is just a little bit out there and testing me in different areas. Obviously, as a football freestyler, I'm used to controlling a football, but when you add in sand dunes and desert and heat, it makes it a little bit harder. Another challenge that I've done similar to this was up Mount Everest, and it was for the greatest ascent within an hour to control a football. And I've actually got the football that I use right here. And that is similar because it was another endurance challenge. Even though it was only for an hour, we did it at the end of the trek. We went above base camp altitude to 6,000 meters. So at that point, I was feeling very, very tired. And I would imagine that last two, three days, the Sahara, because of the heat and the exhaustion, I can, you know, hopefully channel that and, uh, and, and get past it and, and set another Guinness World Records title. So the preparations for this challenge and this Guinness World Records title, it's been a tough one to prepare for. It's been a lot of endurance work on the sand. It's been working with weight vests on, you can see this is what I'm wearing at the minute. I've been doing a lot of stuff with kettlebells, just making my legs a lot stronger and just getting used to keeping the ball up for, for long durations really, and obviously keeping it under control. So I've mostly been using my feet, but I've also been training to use my head as well, just in case, you know, some of the dunes get a little bit steeper, I can use that part of my body too. So as long as I don't use my hands, I should be all right. So when we do the challenge, we're gonna need a lot of support. So we've got four people from the UK going out, that includes me. We've also got a team of locals in Morocco as well. And we've also got support from camels, believe it or not, because we have got to trek from one spot to another and we've got to carry all our own food, our own tents, our own sleeping bag for, for eight days. So we've got to consider all these things to uh, make sure that we can really survive and, and you know stay healthy and hopefully, you know, set a new Guinness World Record title. I'm gonna be burning so many calories and I'm gonna be traveling over 10K a day in the heat on the sand, which means I'm gonna be burning a lot more than I usually would. If I get anything like sun, sunstroke or I'm affected by the sun, that, that's gonna affect my progress and my concentration. So all these things have got to be considered. So lots of sun cream, lots of food, and lots of rest at night. And if I get all that, hopefully there won't be any worries. The fundraising for this challenge is, is all for a children's hospice called Derian House. I've actually been lucky to visit the charity on numerous occasions now and obviously I go in with a football because I know with freestyle that I can show some skills and you know just engage with them. I was like what can I do and obviously as a freestyler that's what I do best so you know setting myself my own challenge I hope that inspires other people outside but you know we really want to raise money for this fantastic cause and this fantastic fanta fantastic charity. The, the video footage that we got with them, it's actually really helped me in my training because you know it is hard when you're just out here on your own, just putting in the miles and sometimes you, there's days where you don't want to train. So when you look at them and what they're going through, it does put it all into perspective and it, it pushes you on. To set a Guinness World Records title is, a massive thing for anyone. It's helped me travel the world. It's helped me meet people that I never dreamt I would meet. And it's also taught me a lot about myself and how I can put myself in different situations and take on new challenges. After Sahara, I'll be like, don't want to see a football again. But a few weeks later, I'll be like, right, what's next, what's next? Because I'm always wanting to further what I do. In the past, I've, I've set and broken quite a few world records. Some I have, some I've lost, but 
i'm coming for them all i want them all back